And there we go, we are live. So hi guys, welcome back to Vape Don't Smoke. It's Paul here. And yes, I do have my Scottish friend with me. Um, welcome to... And there we go, we are live. So hi guys, welcome <laughs> back. Not done my own stream, Paul. <laughs> uh, so yes, welcome to Vaping with Vic. He's the second person to take on the interrogation. So Vic, thank you very much for taking the time out to join us today. Yeah, I, I I tweeted out about this and I said you were after the set. You had the other Vic on, now you've got me. <laughs> yeah, that's, I've only got two two friends in the vaping world, so <laughs> I've used them all up. <laughs> uh, you never know, TVP might be on next. He might agree to come on. No, you never know. You never know. Um, so hi, hi everybody in chat. Uh, we're not going to ignore chat, but I will kind of come back to chat in sections. So please do comment and, and ask any questions. Now at the end, just like the last time, once I've finished my semi 20, 20 or so questions, we will turn to chat. Now guys, if you are acting like a dick, we will kick you out. And if you're asking stupid questions, we're not going to answer them. So don't waste your time. Try and keep it realistic. Also, put it in big, bold, capital letters so that I know that you're asking a question. You ready to rock and roll, Vic? Ready as always. Okay. So uh, what are you vaping on? Let's start with a simple one. Well, that one's easy. Hold on. I need to put myself up in cam so I can see. There we go. Asmodus uh, Mini Kentuka Dama Edition with... The Kelpie. The Kelpie. That's good. That's good. You having a, you having a beer? You having a whiskey? Got a drink? Oh, no. fuck. If I drank, if I drank tonight, I didn't end up walking into the fucking studio with a raging hangover. I don't stop drinking until I'm drunk. I've got the Times Vape with the uh, Times Vape Dreamer with the Ardent and Hybrid mode right now. So it's screwed directly on. Cracking bit of cat, this. As always, I've got something from Yay Q Mini with the the fuck is this kyle and two and that's it excellent excellent well i've got my trusted crown four i never leave home without it uh, and i do have a little bottle of proper 12 sitting next to me so i will have a little dram um conor mcgregor get, got the got arrested yesterday and that, for some reason I, I just felt i needed to drink his whiskey Did so, he? yeah it, oh, so, I, Someone was taking his picture and he's went and grabbed the phone, smashed the phone, and then rather than just walk away, he's then picked the phone up and took it with him. So he's been arrested <laughs> for theft. <laughs> um, Only but, Connor would do something he, like that. He got out, but he paid something like nine thousand pounds bail. It was like, what's the point? Nine grand to Connor. Um, but. I don't know what he did it for, but he has coloured his whiskey. He's added a colour to it. I don't he's know why. He's darkened it out. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's darkened it out to make it look like a make it look like a long age single malt. But I don't know why he bothered. I mean, we know it's not because yeah. it's you know it's age three years plus. Ah, it's silly, silly. But there you go. Uh right. So the Kelsey. Um, let's just start there. So first of all, what is it? It's a tank. It's a tank. Is that a stock coil or an RTA? Oh, no, it's an RTA. An RTA, and it's made with? EH Pro. So why EH Pro? Did they approach you, or did you approach them? Well, the original the original plan for the Kelpie was with uh, Keys, makers oh, of the Solomon 3. Solomon, but, yeah. Yeah, Keys, they, they wanted to change way too much of the tank, and I, I started to get the feeling that they already had a tank design. And they just wanted to slap my name on it. And I was like, see ya. And I was talking to I was talking to a couple of folks that I know from EH Pro and saying, look, I've got because I, I talked to I talked to a number, a number of vendors and a number of manufacturers, just chatting to them normally on WhatsApp. And I goes, Look, I've got this tank idea. You fancy working with me? And EH Pro went, Yep. And that was it. Excellent. So the um Solomon's not the first company to try and get you to put your name on something are they did yeah. you not there's a few companies have done that now aren't they just giving you a tank and saying do you want to call this your own yeah oh there's been there's been a there's been a number of them ever since the whole ever since the whole get a reviewer to make something happened over in the united states there's been like Watofos contacted me about it and at that time i wasn't interested geek vape and digi flavor contacted me i 
kind of worked with Digi flavor for the Siren 2, but my name wasn't on the box because that was only beta testing. Uh, Aspire, right. they contacted me about it, and I said no. And at the, t at the time that the case um, contacted me, I had the idea of this tank in my head, so that's why I went for it. Damn, Aspire contacted you. I mean, I don't think they've done anything with any reviewer, have they? They've done a bit of work in the background with a couple of big US reviewers, but that's basically been it. Hmm. Excellent. So how does it work? Do you draw a picture? Do you, I don't know, do you just tell them your ideas and they draw you a picture? Or? Well, for me, I drew a picture and it looked as if a fucking three-year-old got a bunch of crayons out and scribbled in a bit of paper, but apparently they managed to translate that into a working design. And that that's the way I did it. That's, that's the way that... TVP did it as well, but you've got some of the US reviewers that go the full hog, like 3D designs with yeah. AutoCAD and stuff like that. But me, I just I just scribbled down pictures on a bit of paper and scanned it and sent it to them. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And why 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 a tank? Everyone, why why not unbox mod or squonk mod or a mech mod? Box mods are too easy. Mech mods oh, are but, but too easy. Mech it's mods, too, isn't it? It's kind of hard to make it your own. And the mech, mech mods, the only thing you can, the only thing you can get wrong with this design is the switch. And if you screw up a mech mod, you don't deserve to put your name on anything. To be honest, I was, I was toying with the idea of doing a dripper, but there's so many reviewer design drippers out there now. There's loads yeah. of them. You would kind of get swallowed up, especially the kind of rush that we had. I mean, yeah. it was like you couldn't go 15 minutes without another reviewer. And then when you finished it off, you went back to the start and started again. Because, I mean, what's Mike Vapes got? About six now? How many yeah. pulses are there on the market? Like 20 of them? Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, how many RTAs are done by reviewers? I mean, I know um, Suck My Mods get one or two, maybe. He's got two. Um, I think Mike Vapes has got one TVP, yeah, the Og Vape one. Um, yeah, intake, yeah, TVP's got one. TVP. Uh, the other Vic that you had on, he's got a mouth to lung one out. Of course, the saver, how can you forget it? Saver, yeah, I mean, so that's um, one hand, that's like five, you know. So, how many RDAs? There's, there's loads, five. You, need, you need a whole football team's hands yeah. to count them all. There's loads. Um, so what would you? If you, if you were vape, forget reviewing, if you were vaping on your own, you were going to do something nice, what would you build? A single coil, dual coil, mesh coil? Single. Single, yeah. I've always been a fan of single coil tanks. Would you mouth to long or direct long? Mouth to long. But st still, even now? In the morning, when I wake up pissed off and angry with the world, which I usually am first thing in the morning, that's my setup of choice. <laughs> It's the old digi flavor siren one with a bit of Yalek tobacco in there, and it's the Smock Guardian two pipe, and this has got eighteen milligram in it. Oh, eighteen milligram! That's what I've that's what I've ate for the first hour and a half. Eighteen oh. milligram. That would that would that would make me want to go back to my bed. <laughs> <laughs> eighteen milligram! Wow, um, fantastic! See a single coil coil kind of guy. Yeah, I know. You why is the Kelsey not mouth to lung? Because that's your that's your preference. Because the mouth to lung market, you've got Nature Vapes True Tank, and you've got Vaping Vix Saver, and then you've got a load of other a load of other mouth to lung tanks that came out and at the back end of twenty eighteen. That it's it would be hard to make a mouth to lung tank and design one in today's market that number one would sell because hey i want to make fucking money from this right Fun i'm being that. honest here and number two would feature in people's top lists it's easier to do a direct to lung tank than it is to do a mouth to lung tank because the likes of the saver and the likes of the true tank, they're already up there at the top, and it's going to be very hard to push them off. Very hard. Yeah, yeah. Um, fair enough, fair enough. Are you planning on doing, I, I believe, a stock coil tank as well? Is that the Kelsey yep. 2 or the Kelsey something else? 
It's no, it's going to be something different from EH Pro. It's going to be it's going to be named something different. It's not Kelsey, by the way. It's Kelpie. Kelpie. I've you know the, 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 big, the, big, the big metal statues. I must have said Kelsey fifty times in this video. You know, I thought about correcting it before now. I thought you, I thought you would caught on that you were saying it wrong. <laughs> you know, you could have sent me one, and that way I could have sat here breaking it with you. There's only one out there in existence right now, and that's the test sample version that, that really, I've got here. Right. Yeah. Um, so stock coil one, when are we, we seeing that? Is that still a wee bit down the line? That's going to be a wee bit down the line. It's going to be it's going to be specifically for the TPD market. Mm. There's right, not okay. going to there's not going to be a version like a bigger version tank release for the US market. EH Pro are directing this towards the UK and the EU. Excellent. Right, so here we go. You're trapped in an elevator, Vic. You know you're not going to be rescued for at least 12 hours. What mod, juice and tank do you want to have with you? Oh, trapped in an elevator for 12 hours. To save me from climbing the walls, it would have to be one of Les Pickens' tobaccos. Mm. Preferably at 12 milligrams, so I don't knock myself out. Um... It would be in the EH Pro True Tank or a Digi Flavor Siren, but I'll lean more towards the True Tank. And I would have it on, I would probably have it on something like this. The MX class, which is pocket friendly. Great for a mouth to lung setup. There we go. Fair enough. And what would you not want to have with you? Anything from Anakin. <laughs> still, still, still having that little feud running right now. Oh, aren't we? I don't hold a grudge or anything. I'm not better. <laughs> <laughs> so, anything from Anakin then is anything. Is, from don't want to be on a left with anything from Anakin. Um. So why why a YouTube reviewer? Um, I remember watching your first video, and it was I actually watched it today again, and it was almost like a vlog style video. It was, um, yeah. So you kind of went from vlogging your journey to to reviewing. What? Why? Why a YouTube reviewer? Why not a vlogger? Or why not a a something else? Because vloggers, you would run out. Of, you would run out of things to say. If you were if you were going to be vlogging about the vaping world, or you were going to vlog about your vaping journey, you would end up running out of things to say, and you would get to the point where your vlog would basically be, "Oh, look at the new stuff that I've bought," and then you would just slowly slide into doing reviews. Mm -hmm. The original intention of the you could see it in the first video. The original intention was basically to do a vlog or vlogs about me giving up smoking. Then I started doing juice reviews and it kind of snowballed from there. Just kept snowballing. So I think, I mean, I don't know everybody, obviously, but I think out of all the YouTube reviewers, you're probably the only one that started the day he started vaping. Yep. Uh, which is pretty cool. I mean, I know I started about a year later, um, but to actually start filming the first day is, is pretty cool. That's No one else is going to get that now. Mm -hmm. Um, so why why vaping? Why I know you're a big fan of Star Trek, is it? Star Trek or Doctor Who, is it? Doctor oh, Who? Yeah. Both of them. Both of oh, them. Why, why, why vaping reviews? Why not movies or, or Star Trek videos? Or Everyone's doing those, though. That's the thing. It's, 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 it's hard to stand out, the, stand out in the crowd if you're doing a channel on YouTube reviewing sci-fi shows because... Online, online sci-fi film and movie reviewers are a dime a dozen these days. They are. Yeah, that's true. I suppose I, I always thought about doing game reviews, but I mean that's who, even that's even harder to get into. Possible, it really yeah. is. I, I watched one. I watched a game review the other week, and it was like really well done, really well edited. Um, and he had like six hundred subscribers. I mean, it was like wow, that is yeah. that is shocking. That's you need to remember great. if you're doing if you're doing stuff like games, you're up against some of the big hitters. Like okay, PewDiePie doesn't really review games that much now, but that's where he started. And then you've got you've got Jack Septicai is mm. up at six, seven, ten million, ten million subs. They basically own that area. It's it's very difficult to get into. Very difficult. So in terms of your reviewing 
career, what's the best tank you've ever reviewed? And don't say TVPs, because I've tried TVPs tanks. <laughs> 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 the best Hi, Mark. oh that's a I'll start with mouth to lung first because that's going to be easy K-Fun K-Fun 4 K-Fun 4 funnily enough I actually really like the K-Fun 4 uh, Richard hates it he said it was, I, 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 was the first, I think he's the only person I've ever heard say the K-Fun 4 shit Wow, because I've got key fun for sitting up there. I don't really use it that much. Right, that's the mouth to lung best. The best rebuildable tank I've ever vaped on. It's got to be the Geek Vape Griffin, the original Griffin, the first one. Ah, oh, game changer Loved the Griffin. Tank. Loved it. Um, very, very good. And other side of the coin, what's the worst tank you've ever reviewed? Fucking Smock. not. <laughs> nah. Smock RSBT2. Oh, I remember. Did Smock not that, fall out with you for like five years over that fell, one? Yeah, they fell out with me for about two and a half years. They started talking to me when I stopped talking to Anakin, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Um, so, same question. Uh, box mod, worst and best that you've reviewed? The, I don't really have a worst box mod, to be honest. There's been a couple of dodgy ones from Smock, like seriously dodgy wondering what kind of direction they were going down with the stupid flashing leds and torches and crap but in in the market it is it's hard to come out with a mod especially a box mod that's just bad it really is the best. The, yeah should never happen should exactly should never happen the best up until recently it was this which is the black and gold G class, but now <laughs> fucking love yeah, this thing. Love this thing. Love it. <laughs> uh same question. Dripper wise, have you got a hate a, a worst dripper? Worst dripper was the Cthulhu. It was that mouth to lung thing with the stupid top cap that had so your barrel was here. This is in fact I can oh, show I you. Remember it. Was yeah, it the really barrel was here. Wasn't it? It? The mouthpiece was off to the side That's on it. Right. It was, yeah, I yeah. remember that one. I remember Can't that. Remember it, wasn't, it, it wasn't tight, a tight draw at all, was it? It wasn't. It wasn't. And they, they marketed it as a mouth to lung dripper. It yeah. was a steaming pile of shite. <laughs> and I said that in the review, but they still talked to me after it. Um, Favourite RDA you've reviewed? Doesn't goon. The Goon. Yeah, the Goon. Any one of them. Um, I think Richard said the same, actually. Yeah. Right. So uh, this is my favourite line of questioning. And um, being Scottish, you know what I'm talking about. You know how we always kind of sum people up by saying "good guy, good guy, wank, wank." All right. Um, if we really don't like them, they're a prick. Right. So using that. Oh, hold on, give me two minutes. <laughs> Maybe it was something I said. <clears throat> okay, so while Vic's doing whatever he's doing, I'll just jump into the chat and say hello to everyone. Oh, TVP, hello TVP, how are you? Uh, I would love it if you would come on to this interrogation if you are free one night. Uh, uh, that would be fun. I think you would actually be very, very good. Um... God, there's loads. Ah, uh, let's see. James Nicol, hi James. Hi G Vapes. Hi Erskine Vapor, Ian Morgan, Hip Hop Juice. Sorry about that. Oh, no, cup it's okay. Tea. Oh, cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, she always makes me one at quarter past eight. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, good guy, good guy, wank and prick if you really dislike them, right? Right. Here we go. Brennan Rogers. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> He's a prick. So it's, so it's good guy, wank and prick, and wank's yeah. in the middle. Yes. Go with wank. Yeah, wank's kind of... He's all right. He's just all a right. power wanker. Uh, Vim Vic. Oh, the one down south? Yes. Good guy. 
Good guy. Gordon Strachan. <laughs> Prack. <laughs> Mel Gibson. Wank. Le- Liam Neeson. Good guy. Donald Trump. <laughs> if there was an option for lobotomized orange monkey, I would go for that, but I'll go for prick instead. <laughs> well, here's one. The vaping postman. Good guy. Although, if you asked me that two years ago, I wouldn't have said that. <laughs> uh, Jeremy Corbyn. Oh, now that's a... That's a t- Fuck it, prick. <laughs> uh, Jai Hayes. I'm leaning more towards good guy with Jay Hayes these days. Mike Vapes. Good guy. Uh, Vape Heaven. Good guy. Anthony Joshua. Who the fuck's that? <laughs> the boxer that dodges everybody. I don't, I fucking, I very rarely watch boxing these days. I'll go middle of the road and say, wank. Fuck. <laughs> Vape don't smoke. What? I'm hardly going to say, I'm, I'm hardly going to say anything negative when you're staring at me right on my fucking screen. I think Richard called me a prick, to be honest, but there you go. Did he? I, th- I think so. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with good guy. I've had no falling, I've had no falling out with you. Uh, Theresa May. Prick. <laughs> Todd's Reviews. Prick. Steven Gerrard. He doesn't deserve good guy wank. (laughs) I actually hear Rangers are losing tonight, if if you're interested. Last I heard they were 1-0 down. Right, moving on. What's your most commonly used vaping accessory? What, like... Um, well, mine's is the coily tool. Actually, to be honest, that's mine's as well, because I've got a, I've got a coily tool sitting here, I've got a coily tool behind that monitor, and I've got three up at the studio. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've only got one, but it is my most commonly used accessory. Yeah, because that's I use it all the time. It's when I'm yeah. cutting coils for doing reviews and stuff. The coily tool always comes out. That's right. Yeah, I'll go with that. Absolutely. Uh, right, so Elvis Presley enjoyed a peanut butter and banana sandwich. Uh, it was identified last week that I enjoy a banana and ketchup sandwich. What's your weirdest food combination? Banana and ketchup. <laughs> you know Fucking what? I thought, seriously, I thought it was normal. I just, I just, <laughs> even I, see when I told people and they were like, "What? <laughs> like, What's wrong with that?" It's just like putting brown sauce on your bacon sandwich. It's so not, Paul. It's so not. Banana and ketchup. <laughs> what? Okay. Uh, what's my weirdest combination? Sometimes I've been known to stumble into one of the local cafes and ask for a haggis, tatty scone, fried egg, and bacon roll. Jesus. I suppose it doesn't fall apart. Nah, sometimes it does, but that's 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 some that's one of that's probably my weirdest combination when it comes to breakfast. I love that for my breakfast. I do enjoy our own haggis, but that, that's a bit much. I mean, that's got a heart attack written all over it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it does, actually, to be honest. It does. It does. Uh, right. So if you could choose to be one of these people, who would it be? Indiana Jones, hmm. David Beckham, hmm. Tony Montana, or Pablo Escobar? <laughs> David Beckham for the money. The money. Pablo Escobar must have been one of the richest men I've ever lived. Yeah, but he kind of frittered it all away, though. David Beckham invested it. And then he was shot and killed. Uh, which yeah, well, that's well. <laughs> 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 so, I mean, that obviously has an effect on your answer. So, David Beckham for the money. What about the missus? Are you about a posh spice? Nah, too thin. Too thin. Okay. Right. So, favourites. What's your favourite food? I'd go with a steak pie supper, to be honest. A steak pie supper? Steak pie supper with a jar of pickled mussels and mushy peas. No pickle? No, I don't like straight pickles. I go for pickled mussels instead. I do I do like the pickled mussels. In the jar. Yeah, really in the jar. Oh, yep. lovely. Lovely. Uh, your favourite drink? 
Guinness. Guinness, your, well, I was going to say your favourite beer next, but that's kind of answered that question. <laughs> <laughs> your favourite whiskey? It's a toss-up between the standard... It's a, it's a toss-up between the standard Glenfiddich 12. Oh, or one of one of the fifteen or twenty year Isla Juras. Oh, right. No Glen Morangie in there. No, I used to Glen Morangie's a little bit too strong for me these days. But as in it gets you pushed or too burny? Too burny. Burny. Too burny. Uh, what's your favourite movie, Vic? Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane. Favourite TV show? Doctor Who. Favourite chocolate bar? That again, it's a toss-up. I'll go with the one that I eat mostly, which is a Cadbury's Twirl. Oh, very posh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your favourite cake? What's that? Fruit that cake. Fruit cake. Yeah. Uh, fruit, well, I was going to say your favourite Greg's item, but you kind of said your steak bake, didn't you? Yeah, steak bake. Steak bake. Favourite song? Bobby Darren's Mac the Knife. Favourite colour? I'll go with red. Red. Yeah. Favourite type of car? An old one. <laughs> when I'm talking old, I'm... When I was able to drive, right, before the blackout started happening, yeah. I used to own a Mark II Volkswagen Beetle, the final run of the 60s versions. Oh, so if you still had one of them now? Yeah. Yeah, I could sell it for a fucking fortune, I know. But um, I like older cars because they've got a bit of character to them. Yeah, I always wanted to get one of those old Volkswagen camper vans. Oh, um, Scooby campers. Yeah, but... <laughs> It was about two years ago, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to really look into this. And I see, like, a good one that's not that you can actually drive long distance. 20 grand, easy. I was like, screw Ooh, that. Jesus. Back, there was one that was, like, really battered and beaten, and it was, like, 8,000. You're like, God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> screw that. <laughs> Your favourite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle? I've never watched them. Oh, come on. Have you I've, not? Honestly, I've, even even when it was the cartoon version when I was a kid, I kind of ignored it. <laughs> okay. Favourite Power Ranger? No. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Favourite football team? Celtic. Favourite boxer? You don't watch boxing, do you? Mm, now and again, but again, I'm more of a fan of the older boxer, the older style of boxing. I'll go with Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. Favourite takeaway? Normally, if I'm phoning up a takeaway, it's usually the Chinese restaurant. for, and I get, It's not for an actual Chinese meal, though. It's for a medium-rare sirloin steak and chips. All right. You got a Chinese that. restaurant does that. Uh, favourite pizza topping? Usually Hawaiian. Oh, so you like pineapple in your pizza? I love pineapple in my pizza. People are going to fucking wreck me in chat now for saying <laughs> that, but I actually I love pineapple on my pizza. I do. I don't I don't mind it myself, to be honest. I actually think people kind of moan about it for just something to moan about, to be mm. honest. Uh, who's your favourite co-host of your weekly show? Oh, you bastard. What kind of question's that? <laughs> if I was going to if I was going to choose between the three of them. It would need to be Dino just because of the dry one-liners that just slips out of his mouth has the other three of us. Sorry Mark, it's not you. Has the other three of us in stitches and Dean's just sitting there with a straight face. I don't know how the fuck he does it. I really don't. His poems are funny, right enough. He does. Yeah. They are. He, he reads them out without even flinching. I know. I don't know. It's, if I was to try reading them, I'd, I'd, I'd get halfway through the poem. I'd be, I'd be creased up in the fucking floor. I'd I mean, never be able to do it. These questions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who's your favourite Chinese manufacturer? Anakin. <laughs> <laughs> fucking right there. <laughs> 
My favourite Chinese manufacturer. That's that's a toughie if it if it's mainstream. Because I can I can just go straight out and say yee, but they're not they're, they're kind of higher end. If it was mainstream, I would need to go with either Geek Vape or with Tofu. Well, here's the Mark said a smodus a smodus. They used to be straight Chinese owned, but Asmodus are now partly based over in California now. So they're no, not really a full they're not really a full Chinese company anymore. Well Tofu are making good things right now. I don't think yeah. the, I can't remember the last time Watofo brought something out that was shit. They've had a couple of stumbling blocks at the beginning of 2018, but after that, I mean, all the tanks, the, the elevates, the serpents, I've had zero issues with them. Zero. We'll find out how that profile RT80 goes, though. Yeah, I'm, uh, that's going to be an <laughs> interesting one to see how, they're man how they managed to figure that one out. <laughs> Kenny Gillespie, who may... Sheer some odds, Kenny Gillespie, for fuck's sake, Vic Pineapple, man. You are a disappointment. Cheers, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> But it'll, it'll be interesting to see how they manage to turn that profile into a tank. Yeah, absolutely. That's a weird one. Absolutely. Um, your favourite UK mod maker? He's in chat right now, and I've got one of his mods up in the studio. It's got to be Shearsha Mods with the Claymore. And he's got another mech mod coming out relatively soon as well. Fantastic. Right, so I'm going to ask you a couple of which... So it's basically, I'm going to say two things, you tell me which one you like best. Right. Okay. Pepsi or Coke? Coke. Burger King or McDonald's? McDonald's. Cats or dogs? Dogs. With your fish supper, do you like beans or mushy peas? Mushy peas. Jim Beam or Jack Daniels? <sighs> uh, I'll go with Jack Daniels in that one. Big Mac or a Whopper? Big Mac. Macaroni or cheesy pasta? Macaroni. Celtic or Rangers? Celtic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Manchester City or Manchester United? I'll go with United in that one. Well, this is a bit of a daft one, but Anakin or Aspire? Aspire. Godfather or Goodfellas? Godfather. Um, square sausage or slice sausage? Oh, it's got to be square sausage. It's got to be square. Exactly. Salt and sauce or salt and vinegar? Salt and vinegar. Exactly. Haggis or black pudding? Fuck, I'd take both, but if, yeah. I, if I had my arm twisted behind my back, I'll go with the haggis. Uh, Stephen Hendry um, or Andy, tennis player? <laughs> I need to fuck him. Who cares about the tennis guy? <laughs> Who's his name? I, yeah, I'm more of a Stephen Henry fan, to be honest. Yep. Uh, fried egg or boiled egg? Fried. Okay. So, what's the best holiday you've ever been on? Philippines. For wow. a month. Was that where you were getting all those tobacco leaves and that you were talking about smoking yep. proper tobacco in one of your videos? And plus, my mum's from the Philippines as well, so I've got family over there. Oh, so you just pay for flights? Yeah, basically pay for flights and that's it. And that's not only that, it's fucking dirt cheap. I mean, seriously, even now it's dirt cheap in the Philippines. The last time I was there was in 2005 when I was still a heavy smoker. And uh, back then in 2005 over here in the UK, you were paying for a pack of 20 cigs. Uh, 20 Red Marlborough, you were paying round about the £6, £7 mark in 2005. Over in the Philippines, not for a pack of 20, for a carton of 200. The equivalent price in UK pounds, £1.10. pence. Jesus. No wonder people smoke. Yeah. Well, cigarettes are dirt cheap, not just in the Philippines, but all across most of Asia, because they're not as heavily taxed. That's why. So, uh, which vaping company do you feel has done the most for the industry? The most? Yeah, I know. I know how you hate Anakin, but Richard thought it was Anakin. I, I kind of lean towards Anakin myself. But who do nah. you? Think? Nah. Well, I mean, if you look at what Anakin was doing, Anakin were basically following in the footsteps of Aspire. Aspire was the other one. Yeah. 
that's the one I would more lean towards because Aspire, if you look at Aspire's catalogue, they've got a split between starter kits, mid-range kits, and your high-end cloud chuck kits. I would go with Aspire. That's who I would go with. Um, so what would you recommend for a newbie? Oh, take your pick. Aspire, Zelos 1 or 2. Um, there's also the new, although it's all bloody plastic and I'm not a fan of that, the V-Zone Vlit. Oh, I'm not a fan of the plastic yeah. either, but they, they do have a purpose, I suppose. It's a great little starter kit. That's the way I'm looking at it. The tank's pretty damn good, although you've got to chuck the whole tank away when it's finished. You've also got... You've also got the Wismex CB60, which is another, it's another decent little starter. And of course, even though I fucking hate them, you've got the Anakin T series. Yeah, the T18 yeah. is actually pretty good. Yep. Um, what would you recommend for a mech head? If there's such a thing as that. If they're starting out with mechs, don't go all out stupid and get one of the big expensive tubes. Go for something like a Times Vape Dreamer. Uh, and go for something, go for a decent little RDA, like something from Watofo, for instance. Don't go all out balls to the wall and get one of the big expensive mechs. If you're into your mechanicals, though, purge. purge. Got to be purge. Or if you're here in the UK, support local businesses and buy a Claymore from Kenny. There we go. <laughs> um, your bog standard vapor. What would you recommend to them? They're just like not 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 a cloud chucker, not really anything. They're just maybe they've been vaping a while and they want a new kit. I'm gonna get some shit for saying this, but you find them on every single store shelf in every single brick and mortar up and down the country. One of the smock kits. A smock kit. Preferably something like the Smock Arcus that's just straight wattage. They've ripped out the temp control and they've kept it wattage only. I've got an Arcus up in the studio and I use that every day. Nice. The tank's absolute crap, but the mod's pretty damn good. <laughs> um, a flavour chaser? Flavour chaser has got to be mouth to lung. Well, we'll start off mouth to lung. True tank or the saver? somebody who's going to do a bit of cloud chucking, you're going to have to go with something that's got a tighter airflow. The Orfer for, for, for Gear RTA, which I've got sitting here on top of the big Q Mini, a Q class, but I don't have any batteries in it right now. That's a great little tank for flavour. Awesome. I'm not tooting my own trumpet here, but just waiting this coming out. That's all I'm saying. Um, yeah, I'd go with that. And when is the Kelpie coming out? Last week of this month. Oh, so it's mm -hmm. soon. It's very soon. RRP? They don't know yet, but I'm I'm hedging a guess because th they said they're going to be pricing it in line with their other rebuildable tanks. So you're probably going to be talking 25 quid, 30 mm. quid. Excellent, excellent. Uh, someone comes up to you and says, Vic, I'm going to enter a cloud competition. What will I use? You would use something like an Apocalypse Gen 2. Or could you do it with a gun? You could probably do it with a gun with the airflow control wide open, but you would need a set of damn good coils in there, preferably low-density aliens, like not your normal big coil, but low-density coils so the ramp up's quicker. And you would need a decent mech mod. Nothing expensive, something that's got a good button contact, something like the Dream Up, uh, or something like... Again, I'm not, I'm not saying... Uh, Kenny, but you know the sheer sheer mods Claymore, which isn't too expensive, and the button and that thing's fucking fantastic. Or if you've got the cash, one of the latest purge mods. There we go. And someone wants to, to try squonking. What would you recommend to them for that? One of four hundred thousand different squonkers that I've There's so many squonkers out there now. I would. I wouldn't go for a mech squonker. No. I oh, would go for a regulated squonker, so it would be something like the Van de Vate Pulse 80, something like that. Mm, a top yeah. side? Top side, yeah. How the fuck can I forget about the top side? Single or dual, any one of them will do. Yep. Absolutely. Right, so when you were a schoolboy, who was your fantasy crush? 
Someone famous. Kylie Minogue. Oh, of course. Because <laughs> I grew up in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so she was on Home and Away a lot, wasn't it? Was it yeah. Neighbours she was on? Home and Away. No, Neighbours. No, it was Neighbours. It was Neighbours yeah. and then she left to start the whole singing thing. <laughs> I know. How dare she? <laughs> <laughs> like how, and look how that turned out for her. Yeah, I know. She's turned into a multi-millionaire now. Um, so what would you rather... Another 5,000 subscribers, 20,000 views, or one email from a person saying that you helped them quit smoking? One email from a person saying they helped, that I helped them quit smoking. I get a couple of emails a week like that saying, Vic, you've helped me give up smoking, you've helped my uncle give up smoking. And when I read emails like that, that's when you realise how important your videos are actually becoming. Because you're actually helping people give up smoking. Exactly. And that's what it's all about. Exactly. That is the whole point. Um, I get one maybe every couple of months, but it does mean a lot. Yeah. Um, you, you, you do, you, just for someone to take the time out and actually type it up, you mm. know, and um, that is pretty, pretty nice. So that's, that's good. Uh, what's the most expensive mod you have? The most expensive mod that I have. Is it this? I don't know. Because I've got the Illusia sitting next to me, but I think the Illusia is retailing for about 200 euros now, so it's not that. I think it's one of the Kadamas. I don't think it's this one. You know what one it is? It's that stupid shape one. The Omsium 2. The one with the big red stupid button on it. That's it's one. That's how hey. expensive that is. 320 quid. It is unbelievably expensive. Yeah. It is weird. It is weird looking. Very weird. Um, so taking money for reviews, uh, not queue jumping, not not bumping up a queue, taking money to actually do a review, what's your thoughts on that? Should never be done. It's Simple as that. <laughs> because the problem, I mean, the problem is you look at <clears throat> if a company was to walk up. Let's say, for instance, Asmodus suddenly emailed you, right? Uh, and Asmodus said, "Hey, we're going to send you the. We're going to send you our latest mod, one of the Kadamas, or like the latest Minikin or something. And we're going to pay you fifty quid or a hundred quid to do that review, right? You take that money, you do the review. It's a good mod. I mean, let's face it, Asmodus make nothing but good mods these days. But let's say it's a company like Cthulhu." that have got a tendency of releasing a couple of good drippers and one utter shit one two or three months later, and they give you they give you 50 quid or 100 quid or 150 quid to do the review. What you'll have in the back of your head is, if I pan this dripper, they're not going to contact me anymore, and I'm losing money. And this is why, you, this is why when you look at not just the review industry for vapors but you look at the tech review industry linus tech tips jay's two cents barnacle's nerdgasm and all the rest of them they take money to q jump but they don't take money for the review it should never be done yeah never. no i agree with that i agree with that um but you're quite friendly with geek vape aren't you yep um did you ever did you see the video with that young kid in the swimming pool vaping underwater yeah what yeah. what were they thinking I don't have a fucking clue. I sent a message to Diana and Diana didn't even know about that video until she went and looked at it. Apparently, the marketing department for Geek Vape is split into two segments, one for marketing for advertising and one for marketing with the reviewers and Diana's part of the review crew. She didn't even know about that video until I showed her it. Needless to say, she wasn't happy. It just didn't make an awful lot of sense to it me. It didn't. It really it didn't. It was it was stupid. <laughs> I see, have you seen Van de Vape's recent video where the guy's putting it in the tube and he's got wires coming out and all? Yep. What, what? <laughs> can, can you explain to me this fascination with swimming while you vape? <laughs> I mean that. I mean, I, I get that they're trying to prove that it works underwater, but yeah, but the tank doesn't. <laughs> so it's 
<laughs> I, I just can't, I, I, I can't even, you know, just, well, maybe I don't understand it, but I can see the point. I just don't see any reason to, to show us this stuff. <laughs> It's, and it's even like the Aegis, when the, the, the guy went for the swim, he took the tank off, put it down, swam, came back, put the tank back on again. Like, well, why didn't you just put the pod down? Why, why? Why, why did you not just put it all down and then go for your swim? But It would have been better if they'd done it like a real-world scenario. Some guy's walking down a street in Shenzhen, China, after it's been raining, and they drop their mod in a puddle of water, and it's like, oh, oh look, it still works. It's waterproof. That would have worked. Yeah. Splashes them through a puddle. Yeah, that would have worked. Yeah, I like didn't swim with your vape. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a bit weird. It was a bit weird. Uh, so vaping with Vic, fifty seven thousand subscribers. Yeah, maybe, no kicking the ass off it. Maybe more, maybe a wee bit less. Um, I was watching. I watch a lot of computer game stuff and that. And, and like, there's one channel in particular, the Game Chasers, and yeah. there's they're kind of like. There's a bunch of them do that channel, and then they've all got their own channels after that. But they all basically it's during one week, um, they all done a video where at the start of it they done a shave with the Dollar Shave Club because they were sponsored. Basically, my point. Right, there's a lot of people that are actually sponsored by Dollar Shave Club these days. That's right. So, the, so they all shaved before it. Um, I suppose. So, why my question is is why is vaping with Vic not sponsored? The channel itself isn't, but the live show is. And the way I seen it, I, 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 I'll be honest, hands up, I was toying with the idea, you know, baked in adverts, like you're seeing the Dollar Shave Club thing at the very yep. beginning. Users can't skip it. It's baked into the video. So they've got to move the fucking slider over. And you see Linus Tech Tips doing it. Today's video is brought to you by Intel or some shit yeah, like yeah. that. But well, I was thinking... Even and all that kind of uh, stuff. But I was thinking there's no there's no real way to do a baked and sponsored advert without a competitor's product being on that review. Could you not do it with something that's completely not vape related? Like I said, they do it with shaving gear, but they are doing computer game reviews. True. But the thing is though, I mean, who would want to have their advert outside of the vaping industry? Who would want to have their advert? And a review for an electronic cigarette product. That's the problem. Yeah, well, that's true. That is true. That's the problem. I mean, Iron Brew and Buckfast surely are chapping your door, are they not? Fucking, I wish they fucking were the amount of fucking Iron Brew I drink a day. <laughs> <laughs> so you've had no offers at all? No, no, even just like one video? None. No, that's None. That's surprising. Uh, right, so, drama queen. Um... <laughs> <laughs> don't go anywhere yet <laughs> so I mean I'm not going to this is not obviously offensive but a lot of people do refer you as a drama queen and they, they kind of tie you with this title of being this drama person Yeah. Um, do you like drama Vic? I like certain types of drama but I have 1,980 something odd videos currently on my channel, right? And the drama usually shows up in the what's up. That's a yeah. given. That's what the what's up's there for. I keep the drama away from the review because the review's the professional side of the business. We've been back to business now. Yeah. There is roughly 200 and I think it was episode 203 of the what's up last weekend. Out of the 203 videos, the full-out in-your-face drama is only 10. Now, you compare that to Jay Hayes, who's the drama queen. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And you yeah. listen, it's literally every third or fourth video, Jay Hayes is... Because that's Jay Hayes. So 10 videos out of nearly 2,000 videos. Yeah. So what would, you, what would you say to all those people that say, oh, Vic's just a bit drama? Fuck off. You're really <laughs> jealous. That's what it comes down to. They're just fucking jealous. That's what it is. Do you do you believe that drama increases increases subs and views? It depends on the type of drama. If it's because I look, I, I'm, I'm a big stickler for analytics, right? And my channel's up at 56-ish thousand subscribers right now. And any time there is 
a big drama video that takes off and just flies, like the high on videos, the high on US. I remember videos. that one. That that was that wasn't so much drama as you just being re- angry. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot I mean, of people looked at it. Now, my subscribers fucking shot up. I was at 2,500 subs when the first High On video went up. When High On 2... Uh, eh? is, that, is that how many you had? God, that must yeah. have been a while ago then. That was a long time ago. I was back at the beginning of 2015. Those High On videos came out. I shot up to 5,200 by the time the second one came out. But drama videos, they get you views. They get you... Pardon me, they get you a shit ton of views. But as any as any reviewer will tell you, when you bring out a drama video, you get the views, but you don't really get the subscribers. What does get you subscribers is you put a review out, it's a glowing review for a company like Asmodus. And then what Asmodus does, they get that video link and they put it in Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, all mm. the way through social media, and not only are you getting views, you're getting 1,000, 2,000 subs from that single video. That's when you get the subs. Yeah. Drama okay. does not drive views. In fact, there's been a couple of occasions where I brought out drama videos. I actually lost subs. Really? Yeah, I lost subs instead of gaining. Well, that kind of puts that to bed then, doesn't it? I mean, it's... The analytics um, is all there. I mean, you can... You can do the funny kind of drama, which is what Jay Hayes does. He's he he classes himself as an entertainer, and that's what he is. He's an entertainer that happens to do reviews. Or you've got the serious as hip hop just just said. Uh, no, in fact, it's not hip hop. It's Mo H. As Mo H just said, Vic just vents. That's what I do. I vent when I make a drama video. I've got a problem with something, so I'm going to hit record and start fucking venting about it. That's what I do. <laughs> Um, so wh- what kind of YouTube videos do you watch? Um, do you watch a lot of vaping reviews? I tend to I, I tend to avoid watching reviews of items that I've got in for review. And the only time I watch those reviews, like your Vila Vowel review, I didn't watch that until mine went up this afternoon. Mm. And that's when I realised you didn't like the mod. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, like, I mean, okay, I didn't really give it a glowing review because it's all bloody plastic. I'm not a fan of plastic mods. I'm not. I'm really not. No, no. And, and it was, it wasn't just plastic. It was almost like the cheapest, crappiest plastic. You yeah. Could, yeah. I mean, if I sat on it, my fat ass would have crushed it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it. It felt like kind of one of those cheap toys you get. It did. You, you know, it did. It felt very very cheap and very light that was my one bugbear with it but i mean again it is cheap though i mean you know it's not you know it's not expensive to buy so i mean you get what you pay for kind of springs to mind but um but yeah i'm not a massive fan of disposable tanks it's kind of something i I, I have vents about you know but um but yeah so that was uh so you, you you just watch Review reviews after you've reviewed it yourself. After I've reviewed it myself, or if it's a high end bit of kit that I know for a fact I'm not going to get in, which is why I still watch some of Jay Hayes' videos because he does get a lot of high end stuff. When Damien Mortar was still doing reviews, I'm never going to own even fucking one percent of the stuff that a bloody good vaping's reviewed. So I, I used to love watching his videos. Now and again, I usually watch. Huh? Strange though, because Damien's only what 20, 22, 25,000. Yeah. Yeah, you're at 60 nearly. Did the high end come come near you? No, well, Damien Damien bought all of his stuff, though. Oh, right, right, okay. He he, he bought all of his stuff, and he he buys it in, reviews it, and if he likes it, he'll keep it. If he doesn't, he sells it on in the Safer Vapor sale group. And then get something else and just repeat the process. I kind of did that myself. Um, So what other videos do you tend to watch if you're not watching vaping reviews on YouTube? Tech stuff. All right. Computer stuff. Computer stuff, stuff. Like that. So you're quite knowledgeable about cameras. I know I've asked you a few questions about mm. my cameras and um, but stuff like that, lenses yeah. and all that fun stuff. Oh, yeah, all the tech stuff. I like the tech channels. <laughs> Good stuff. So if you had a thousand pound, a thousand pound falls onto your lap. No one has to know that you've got it. Therefore, you don't have to buy anybody anything, but you, you do have to spend it in one day. What do you buy yourself? 
I would buy myself I would buy myself an updated Ryzen 7 because the one I've got sitting next to me is one of the older first gens. I would get a brand new Ryzen 7 chip, the board to go with it, upgraded DDR5 memory. I'd keep the graphics card because that's a 1080. I would ditch this case and get the new one. What else would I get with that grand? I would then, with the leftover money, get a cheap laptop for the office. Here we go. You know, I never really understood a word of what you just said there. <laughs> <laughs> but okay <laughs> moving on uh so a, a, a computer you'd buy a computer a computer and a laptop yep uh so if you could take the family anywhere in the world all expenses paid holiday where would you go all expenses paid holiday yeah that's a tough one because the first thing that springs into mind is the Philippines, but everything gets paid for over there by the family anyway. If it was just a luxury thing, somewhere it would probably have to be somewhere in Canada. Yeah, I'd go to Canada, the north of Canada where it's nice and cool because I don't like fucking hot weather. I fucking hate hot weather. You hate hot weather? Can't stand hot weather. I just melt. <laughs> that's what beer is for beer, beer in a pool you know just jump in the pool and sit with a beer that would work yeah um because i'm quite big I, I get dead hot and flustered and annoyed when it's hot and i i kind of go in a bad mood but i do enjoy it i just kind of can be quite snappy mostly. last summer i hated last summer because last summer was roasting yeah it was like a proper truck tro abroad and it's like you're going to work in your Trousers are stuck to your ass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> thick black socks on, leather shoes, and oh, horrible, horrible. <laughs> uh, right. Well, I'm just about nearly done, guys. So turning over to chat. If you want to ask Vic any questions, can you just type it out just now in full capital letters, please? And I will, we will dive onto them. Um, so we are just about done. Uh, so. Yeah, I mean, in terms of yourself, Vic, how do you... I mean, I know you've just been kind of broken into recently. That was a bit of a bastard, and obviously you, a lot of people helped you out. I mean, any yeah. any news from the police on your break-in, or has that just been shelved now? About two, about two weeks ago, the little female copper, one of the one of the investigative police force, uh, popped up, chapped the door of the office and said, they've got no leads, so they're putting it on file, which means they've shelved it. They've shelved it. Yeah, my car was broken into, and I had to. I, I waited for them to. This was years and years and years ago, and yeah. um, they came out, stole my stereo, and, and the police came out, basically pulled up and went like that. We're never going to find this pal, so just uh, don't even think we are. And I'm like, you're just useless. Why did I even wait for you? Why even phone you? I know there's no point. There's, there, there really isn't. A, the investigative side of the police force is only there for the big stuff, like murders, that kind of thing. But you uh, get robbed by an by an opportunist. Odds are they're not going to bother investigating it. I know. And did you manage to get everything back or uh, replace everything that you yeah. lost? More, yeah, in fact, all of it was replaced. All oh, of it. The two cameras, the microphone, the computer was replaced. Zan popped up and put the computer together for me while I was putting up the security cameras and shit. So, yeah, everything was replaced. Oh, that's good. That's good. How long did that take to get everything back to normal from the day you were walked into nothing there to the day you were back in business? About seven days. So, so that's a big fuck you to the thieves, really, isn't yeah, it? It really you is. Know, it really seven is. days. <laughs> um, you know, and, and you got a new security system. Fucking right. That place is like fucking Fort Knox. It's a bit fucking late. It's like bolting the fucking shed shut once the horse is already bolted. But yeah, it's it's like fucking Fort Knox in there now. New windows, new locks in the doors, double locked. Uh, the outside grill in the windows is getting put in tomorrow morning. I've got security cameras inside the studio and I've got security cameras in the storage office next door. Um, did you get... The, the same lenses and cameras and all that kind of stuff? The exact same cameras and lenses, because that's that's the cameras that I know how to work, the Canon 200Ds. Yeah, so I mean, that see, see that worked out okay then. I mean, the, yeah. the thieves might have just inconvenienced you for seven days. I mean, that's yeah. nothing, you know, so good. That's really, really good. Now, that was a, that was, 
a shite post. I mean, I remember seeing it and dropped your message. I was like, that is, that's not funny. You know, that's just bang it order. Um, it's, with myself, I, I make jokes. I, I film in my spare room with a, with a fucking, what is it called? A Panasonic camcorder thing that costs like 300 quid. You know, that's it. I know that you quite a lot of gear that's high end and then you get your lenses, you've got your little motors and all that. Yeah. You, know, you put a lot of effort in it and for someone just to kind of help themselves, that is bang it order. Exactly. And that's what they did. They basically helped themselves. Um, good, good, good. Right, so let's turn over to chat. Uh, remember, if you're asking any questions that are a little bit naughty, it will be ignored. So if we can just kind of keep everything nice and and polite, you know, we're, 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 we're Scotsmen here. We don't do naughty. <laughs> Uh, so Jack M asks for your favourite band, Vic. I thought I covered that off. No, I don't favorite think it's Beatles. Oh, of course. <laughs> I think he's just set us up there, hasn't he? <laughs> I, I've, just, I've just walked right into that one. <laughs> Jack M, you're on the bad books. <laughs> Uh, Michael Stroberg, hi Michael, how are you? Um, he's asking for your best retro vape gear that is still awesome. Retro vape gear that's still awesome. I mentioned the Smock RS BT2 as being a steaming pile of shit, mm -hmm. but the Smock RS BT1, the original rebit, and it was a re full RTA tank by Smock before they went down the road of kits. I've still got that on my lineup, and I've got it down in the studio. It's a cracking little single coil tank. I fucking love it. Great little tank. I'd probably throw in the Nautilus Mini. I think I could still survive on that as well. Yeah, I'd go with the Nautilus Mini. I'm, I'm kind of leaning more towards the Nautilus 2 these days. That's what, I'm, that's what I seem to be picking up more. Stuart says, are you going to have Paul on the UK vape show so you lot can tear him a new ass?" Well, what? <laughs> yeah. That is, that, I, I can't wait for that. You're on the. He's on the list. You're on the list. Don't 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 rush that list. <laughs> um, you know that that's that that can wait. <laughs> um, Fitzy seventy nine eighty. Do you watch the Orville? It's as good as Doctor Who, in my opinion. That's Seth. Seth, what's his face? His show. Um, it's more Star Trek than Star Trek Discovery is. And yeah, I do watch it. All right, it's a go. good show. It's a good show. I'm more of a Sopranos kind of guy. I like things to make sense. All that sci-fi <laughs> stuff's a little bit confusing. <laughs> Although, I will say Starship Troopers is one of my favourite films. Starship Troopers is a big bag of popcorn, can of beer, feet up in the table and watch. That's what that's what Star is. It's a fun movie, Starship Troopers. Nice and simple, and you know, although the second, third, I think they're meant a fourth is all they're all rubbish. A fourth one? Bloody hell! Oh, yeah, I think I saw it for Netflix or something. Uh Gary Leishman said he loved your mixing vid. Any more instructional videos in the pipeline? There will be probably it's it's not going to be until after the Vapor Expo in May. Um, I'm the way that the way the review queue is looking like looking right now. There's going to be enough coming in and reviews going out until the Expo hits. But what I'm planning and doing is during the summer. Um, this is probably going to be June. June or July, I'm going to take a couple of weeks off from reviewing to get stuck in about the old eSig one videos, and I'm going to be doing simpler mixing because that last mixing video I did it got a bit confusing for some people because it was like fucking seven flavors all being mixed in oh, okay, and right. it just got now nah. I'm gonna do simpler mixing videos probably during summer of this year. I think the, the only mixing video I did I think was a a, a short film. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that because that's that's what's on the market now short films. Yeah I think that was I think I've done one I'm not sure but yeah I think that was the I poured VGPG and, and some nicotine into a bottle that already had the flavour in it. Yeah. Um, Fodstar, I'm not sure if that you understand what this means, Vic. What tier are you in WOWs? What? No, no, I'm not. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, he's, he's probably talking World of Warships. Aye. All right, okay. World of Warships, I think um, I, I've, I've got the best mark. Although I bought that because I couldn't be fat waiting for it. No, wait a minute. I've got the Bismarck on the tier, so I think that's a tier nine ship. I've got the Tarpits, but I bought that one. But I haven't really been playing World of Warships that much recently because I've been too fucking busy. Fucking, I just don't have the fucking time. 
Yeah. I've got a few a few games building up myself. Um it's finding the time. Uh, Mo H says, what do you drive? I think we've already established you, you, you don't know. Yeah, I had to give up my license. LG McCutcheon, vaping with Vic, what do you think of Dinner Lady Company? The Dinner Lady Company, I'm assuming she's been in. I remember Vape Dinner Lady when they first appeared. And this was pre-TPD, before the TPD took full effect. And their e-liquids was some of the best mainstream liquids on the market. The flavour from that lemon one was fucking sublime. Lemon tart, yeah. yeah that's the one. And yeah. then we changed the recipes. And they're fucking horrible now. The cornflake tart, I used to like that one as well. That tastes like dry fucking cardboard. I don't know what the fuck they've done to their recipe, but they completely ruined their e-liquids now. They have. All right. I know that they brought out Nick Salts. Um, yeah. Nick Salts. I think one of them was like 56 milligrams or something they sent me in. Yeah. Jeez. Strong stuff. Uh, Richie Elson, Vic, is the studio spring mounted? No, it's not. It's not self adjusting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Midnight Sun asks, How's Gwen? Gwen is fine. Um, she's busy with work these days. That's why you never see her in chat because, you know, at our time, it's like fucking nine o'clock at night here. Over where she is, it's about two in the afternoon. So she's busy with work right now. Uh, David KS asks, why don't you get on with the vaping biker? Oh, that's a long story. That's a very fucking long story. And it would probably take up about two hours of the show to explain it all. Needless to say, he doesn't talk to me. I don't talk to him. And we all live happily ever after. Yes. <laughs> uh, Unicorns Hole asks, if you could live anywhere in the world, would you choose under TVP's desk? <laughs> I mean, I don't what? know. What kind of fucking question is that, Cron? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Uh, <laughs> do you get fed up with people going on about seagulls? Yeah, the seagull th the seagull thing was funny at the beginning, but now it's now it's getting a bit old. Got him, it's getting a bit old. Uh this isn't really a question, but Paul Mac says Zan is a really good bloke. I've a lot of time for him. He is. Um Jason Corathus says, Do you play war and order on your mobile? Used to, don't anymore. You, you don't anymore. Uh, Foggy Bob's been naughty, um, so Foggy Bob gets a warning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you could redirect a film, what would it be? Redirect a film? I, I would go with the first of the Star Wars prequels. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Although it would be pretty cool to kind of redirect something that was already awesome and see if you could really fuck it up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, you see, like The Godfather or something that's just perfect and that's just classic. really make, a, make it terrible. <laughs> um, or, you know, I can do better than that, and then just it's just not. <laughs> um, what's this? Frosty Inc. says, what's the price of Iron Brew in Scotland these days? Uh, it's, I think it's a pound for the little. It's a pound for the half liter plastic bottles, and for the big fucking, the big fuck off at two and a half liter bottles, it's something like a pound fifty. Yeah, I, I, I think he's maybe misunderstanding that we don't, we haven't stopped selling Iron Brew. They've just changed the recipe. Yeah, to get to get the actual authentic stuff. I think it's going on eBay for like fifty quid a case. Stupid prices for the original it recipe. Really, is mental. Um. Wacky's Cundy asks, your favourite top three RDAs, RTAs, and top three e-liquids? Maybe just do one of them. <laughs> top three RDAs? The good still up there. I would put the recurve up there as well. What would I go for the third? Did you ever try the Entheon? Nope. That's my favourite. Mm. Really is good. Goon recurve. What would I go for the third? We'll go for a mouth to lung for the third. Something like the Geek Vape Amit MTL RDA. There we go. 
Yeah. Ross Vegas, very interesting question. Can you show us the deck of the Kelpie, please? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not fucking released yet, and I'm not going to show the fucking... You know what's going to fucking happen if I do. Screenshot, let's copy that and release it. No. The clone will be up by Friday. <laughs> um, eat my BB. Best oh, can eat my BB. Sorry, the best Canon EFM lens to take to Expo. Expo? EFM lens? EFM lens, yeah. Was well, that the manual lens? Um, Canon EFM. If you're going to if you're gonna do vlogging with a Canon camera, Mark, um, I would go for a 25 or a 35 millimeter lens. I wouldn't go for a 50 millimeter because if you go for a 50, it's going to be like fucking this. You're going to be right up. <laughs> if you're going to be vlogging, you want the vlog to have a little bit of the background so people have got stuff to look at in the background. I would go for a 25 or a 35 millimeter prime lens if you're going to be vlogging. That's what I would do. Gazy Covers, have you watched The Punisher Season 2? Nope. I have. Very, very good. Hmm. Uh, very, very good, but it has been cancelled, so that's a little bit disappointing. Oh, fuck, it's been, there's a lot of good stuff being cancelled these days. I there think- really is. I think, see, Netflix have cancelled all their Marvel shows because I think Marvel are starting their own TV network thing. That's so yeah, yeah. I think they'll probably all reappear on that. Here's a good question. LG McCutcheon, do you think we'll ever leave the EU? We will. We we will. I'll tell you something right now, even though fucking Prime Minister Mays lost that vote tonight, I will say this. If it gets to the stage where Parliament ends up saying, oh, we're going to cancel, we're going to cancel Brexit, we're going to scrap Brexit. There will be riots on the streets. There will be riots on the streets. I'm not saying a civil war or anything, but we need to remember here that over half of the population voted to leave the EU. I voted to leave, and all it said was, do you want to leave the EU? I didn't say yes to a soft Brexit, yes to a fucking soft border, yes to a border in the middle yeah. of the fucking Irish Sea because Northern Ireland's not happy. I want to leave the EU. That's what I yeah. voted to do. And we're going to find out at the end of this month if Parliament's going to uphold the will of the nation. If they don't, there will be riots. They'll just lose all credibility. I mean, they'll say we'll hold a second referendum. Well, why bother? Because if no matter if the result's not what you want, we'll still be in the same place. So, yeah. um, I think it's, uh, it's it's shady times because if you don't hold up to the vote, then why vote? Exactly. So, if you don't hold up to the vote, then what's the point of a democratic? What's exactly. the point of a democratically held election? And if it does get to this, I'm getting political here. Sorry, but fuck it. <laughs> if it does get to the stage where the People, and I fucking hate this term, we should have a people's vote. We had a people's vote in 2016. We voted to leave. Fuck off. Fucking people's vote. But if it gets to the stage where a second referendum is forced, that's going to have serious ramifications for the future. Because let's say the next general election happens and Labour gets in with a 51% vote. All the Conservative supporters will have to do is I don't like that result. I want a second vote. And the press would have been set for a second vote for the referendum. Mm -hmm. So going down that road is a very dodgy road to go down. I think Brexit will happen. And I think it's going to be a hard Brexit. Mm. That's what it looks like. Um, I think we'll find out a lot of that tomorrow as well. There's a full day on a, a, a debating. So, um, although Theresa May doesn't sound good, she sounds like she's going to struggle to debate with no voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Peter Shaw asks, would you recommend using the original Kanga box as a cheap pod system alternative? Kanga box. What the fuck was the Kanga box? Was that that thing with the lights in the side? The little LEDs going up the side? The Kanger box? Mm, I'm not sure. I can't remember. Oh. Sorry, Peter. Not not really too sure which that yeah. one is. A uh, cheap pod system alternative, Vic? Have you... Cheap pod system. Uh, the Bow One, based in France. You can pick them up for about 15 quid. Then you've got the ones from... Oh, fuck, we keep going back to it. Smock. Mm. The box mods might not be the greatest, but I'll say something. The Smock Infinix? That's a nice little pod system. Would that roughly charge you? 
Uh, about £14.99 if you walk into a brick and mortar shop. So, ten or online then? Yeah, ten or online, yep. I mean, that is cheap. You can't really argue with that. Um, Ricky waiting. No, I haven't yet. So, Vic, um, I do have a friend, Mark, Mr. Fat Slim. I did promise I would ask you to give him a little shout out and a wave. Oh, I recognise that name, Fat Slim. I recognise the name. How you doing? <laughs> if you do come to Glasgow, I'm sure he'll get a wee selfie with you. Yeah, are you going to be at the Glasgow School of Eight, mate? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll be there as well. No. So a, week, a week before the expo, but that's okay. That's well, it's, okay. it's just up the road. It's not as if it's going to cost a fortune. Ah. Unless I see something nice and shiny that I want to buy. <laughs> yeah, and the drink. <laughs> uh, but no, it'll be good to, good to catch up with you in person yeah. as well. Uh, let's see. So how does the Kelpie compare with the gear for flavour? It's a little bit silly question. You're... What I'm going to say is with the Kelpie, do I have it? Uh, do I have it here? Do I? What I'm going to say is with the Kelpie, the Gear RTA did have an impact on the final design. I'm going to show you something right now. I've got the original prototype of the Kelpie sitting up here, and I've got the retail version here. So this one is the original prototype, and this one is the retail. You can see there's a big size difference between the two tanks because... The Gear RTA, and I know for a fact, this little fella here is going to be the tank that everyone compares the Kelpie to, and that's the biggest competitor against this. I'm not going to review my own tank. I'm not going to do it. Instead, I'm going to get the other reviewers to review it instead. But what I will say, from my own taste buds, it's matching the gear. The gear was very good. I mean, no, the flavor. Use the gear. It's a crack. The only, the only problem is with the gear, you're filling it every two bloody minutes. You know, when I was talking to OF, OFRF or off off, <laughs> off, off. I, said, I did say that. I said, it's a shame you didn't make it bigger. And she said, if we made it bigger, you wouldn't get the flavor. Yeah. So you're right. kind of, you know, it's kind of like driving a Porsche and then moaning about fuel. It's, <laughs> you know, <laughs> That's you, exactly you, it. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's, you need to sacrifice to get these good things. Um, Vaping One ask which present company or companies would follow Kanga's steps and get out of the market soon? I have a new Kanga out of the market. They're not bringing out a new pod soon. Yeah, they're bringing out a new pod, but Kanga, for all intents and purposes, are on the verge of bankruptcy now. They're going in a different direction in a different industry now. They're leaving the e-cig industry. Do you think there's any company or companies that are going to follow suit? Not, not that I see, and not that I see in the foreseeable future. It was looking for a couple of months. There, it was looking that like that the smaller companies like Vapefly might start struggling, but Vapefly on the cards, they've got a couple of new drippers and a new tank coming out for the summer of this year. I think the problem with Kanger Tech was mismanagement. And that's what it looked like. It looked like mismanagement. I thought. Um... Steam Crave may struggle with things like the TPD and that, but I just got an email off them with they're bringing out a glass two, a glass yeah. two RDA, and, and a new a new aromatizer as well. So well, you need to remember, I mean, the EU and the UK is one of the big markets, but it's only one of them. They've got the USA, they've got Asia, they've got China, so they're still making money. Yeah, I mean, I, th I don't, I think Steam Crave have just completely ignored the 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 EU because none yeah. of our banks are two mil. <laughs> Yeah, none of them. <laughs> I mean, if anything, they've actually went, fuck you, and we'll, we'll make them 10 mil like tanks. Yep. <laughs> uh, so they've almost went in the opposite direction. Um, so that's that's always good. Um, Tomac says, Lemon Bliss from Les Picking. Oh, that bugger will make you part with your money. Did you ever try Les's Le Lemon Bliss? I don't think I have. No, I don't think I have. Um, I was lucky enough to try it. Um, his juices are good. They are good. Um <laughs> I think he puts a lot of effort into them. See, things like, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen his coffee vapes. He's actually all, all, coffee all that, vapes yeah. in the juice. Yeah. And then he's got he's got that, and I remember TVP talking about this. He had the custard out, and the custard had a vanilla pod in the custard. Yeah, there it is. That's yeah. the one. Vanilla pods. That's a the... brilliant idea. I know. Brilliant idea. Um, It certainly is. It's certainly very, very smart. Uh, let's see any more questions. Uh, Paul Cloud Chasing Cyclist says, 
a steak bake or Glen Fiddock? It depends what Glen Fiddock. It depends on what time of the day it is as well, I suppose. <laughs> 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 but if, if you're hungry or thirsty. <laughs> um, let's see. So, Vic, Barry Patterson asks, Greg's steak bakes or scotch pies? Now, I used to be a big fan of Scotch pies, but I've been noticing, like, we, we've got a shorts debate, well, they're Browning's the bakers now, and their shorts pies, they're lacking that spicy bite that shorts pies should have. So that's why I've mostly been a steak bake man, because the shorts pie recipes changed. Like, the Scotch pie, their, their recipes changed drastically from what it used to be. They're quite greasy now. Oh no, the, the ones here are dry. There's there's no grease coming out. They're, they're nice and dry, but the 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 bite that you used to get that kind of little sharp spicy hit it's missing. They've, they've toned down the spice, which I think's ruined it. Uh, James Nickel um has asked. It's not a question. He says it's my first time at Expo. Obviously, me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping to meet up with you and Paul. So yeah, James, um, I'd be happy to uh, meet up with yourself. Just look um, for us at the bar. Yeah, at the bar. <laughs> Uh, Vic's always got someone round them. <laughs> um, so, yes. Uh, I, I did manage to interview you last year, Expo, yeah. for the interview. That was, that was about 15 seconds, and, and clearly I needed to practice before I did it again. <laughs> uh, TVP's interview was better. <laughs> uh, Dusty Fingers, I used to love the UK vape show, but the content seems less vape-related these days. Any changes planned regarding content? Well, see, this is the problem. There's been, there's been a few people saying that, but the UK vape show, in its current form, at least, the UK vape show's been on, on the go for just over a year. And if we were doing a vape show in the United States, we would have content every single week with a shit show that's going on over there right now. But because we're in the UK, we don't really have much advocacy to talk about because we don't fucking need it. Uh, there's no over-regulation going on because we don't have it in the UK. And you know, we could talk about new releases, but over the past three or four, I don't know if you've noticed this, Paul, since New Year, there hasn't been a lot of major releases. No, very uh, quite. I mean, I've got one or two little things, but... Yeah. I mean, I've usually got a cupboard full of stuff and I don't get everything, you know, but it's quiet. It's quiet and a lot of pods still, you know, and it's... God, yeah, pods. You, know, you get, what was it, the other, like, you well just brought, I mean, although the Caliban was a very pod. good pod. Caliban, that's a nice little pod, that uh, Caliban. Excellent, excellent pod, but I mean, they were late to the party with that. And I think, yeah, I, late. Think, mm. I think it might have did them, worked well for them because they just picked out all the good points and made a really good pod, but... Yeah, it's been quiet. It's almost as if companies are just kind of lost for ideas. You know what? What else can we do? Well, I mean, here's a classic example. There was a there was like five or six months during 2018 where Smock were literally releasing a new kit every bloody week. See, since January of this year, Smock have only released two kits. That's been it. Two. Um. Yeah. It seems like the industry over in China is slowing down. I don't know what the reason is. Maybe they finally realise they've oversaturated the market, but they are slowing down. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, Ramas has asked, what do you think about the RX300? One word. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Who the fuck is going to use it at 300 watts? Why? Yeah, it's it's a bit much, isn't it? As uh, is it the new DNA goes up to three hundred as well, doesn't it? Yeah, if you upgrade it, goes up to three hundred. Um, Gary Leishman says Vic Fedora Trill Trillby or Snapback. Fuck the Snapback, set that on fire, and throw it out the back door. Fedoras for winter, which is what I'm wearing right now, and for the summer, Trillby. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, James Nichols responding saying he'll be buying us both a couple of pints. So thanks, James. I look forward to that. Uh, Midnight Sun asks, are the vanilla pods split open in the bottle? Bottle? No, they're not. They're, they're not split open. I think yeah, they have seeds everywhere then, wouldn't you? If they were split open, the seeds would leak out, so you've got to keep the pod whole. Uh, 
and yeah, I think I think I've got everybody. I hope I never missed anybody's questions. Oh, wait a minute, uh, Arif Mustabir. Hope oh, I'm Arif. pronouncing that right. Can you please ask Vic whether Kelpie will be a better RTA than the Aries? <laughs> okay, if a blind chimpanzee was put in front of a computer and asked to design a tank, he would probably design a better tank than the Anakin Aries. Yes, the Kelpie will be a better tank than the Anakin Aries. And this isn't even a mouth-to-lung tank. <laughs> um, Gailey Bops asks... Gailey Bops! Vic, are you going to the meet on the 30th of March at Vaporize? Oh, that's right. Sully vaporized, uh, vaporized in Victoria Road in Glasgow. Yeah, they're having a meet at the end of this month. Yeah, I'll be going to that one, Gail. I forgot all about that meet. Yeah, I'll be popping up there as well. Nice fella, Sully. Nice fella. He supplies good drink as well. <laughs> <laughs> Always a good start. Always a good start. So guys, we've got eight minutes left. This is a 90-minute show, so we do have eight minutes to go. So if you do have any questions for Vic, uh, please do put them in the comments in capital letters, and I will pick them up. Um, Pinball Wizard, Vic, what's your favourite tea bag? I used to be a Scottish Blend fan, and I, I kind of blame Aiden, Little Bro Vapes, for this. But I've I've started drinking a lot of Yorkshire tea. Really? Yeah, that's what I've got up in the office. Yorkshire. I used to be a massive, massive, bl massive Scottish Blend fan, but I've started drinking a lot of Yorkshire tea now. Something about the, there's a slight difference in the flavour between the two, and I seem to prefer Yorkshire tea these days. Don't know why. I think when I got this house, I bought a box of tea, Tetley tea bags for like it must have had like fifty thousand in it for like five quid. <laughs> Still got them. <laughs> so if so you ever over, a coffee drinker then. <laughs> yeah, coffee. But if you ever if you ever visit, you're getting a Tetley tea bag. <laughs> probably about two years old. Uh, what do you think about the smock Novo and the smock Nord kit from Shemesh Wright? The smock novo, that was one of the little that, that was one of the little pod things, wasn't it? From what I remember. I think the Novo was a pod. Yeah. The Nord kit, what was I I've never seen that. I don't know that one. Don't know that one. Uh, the Novo. I liked it. It was all I'm still a bigger fan of the Infinix though, to be honest. But that other kit, I don't recognise the name. No. Nope. Um Ed Woodcroft. Ed, thanks for your comment. Vic, what do you think of the Lamis the lad? The Lanzimo F4. That's that big fucker, wasn't it? I think so, with a big That's screen. The, yeah, the huge one that took fucking something like three or four batteries. I've never actually reviewed it because I've never actually had my hands in one for review, but I had a shot of one um, in one of the local shops here at the end of last year. It's a fucking big mod. <laughs> it is a shockingly big mod. The thing's fucking huge. It's like that Titan mod that Steam Crave came out with. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was a lot of fun, right enough. But it, it, was, was, it, was, it, was. it wasn't exactly economical or... Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the right word for it, but yeah, it was a bit a bit bonkers. Um, Jason Carathers asks, Family Guy or American Dad? Family Guy. I've always been a Family Guy fan. Uh, I love it when the, the dog acts like a dog, yep. just randomly. <laughs> It, it's just so funny because he'll just be sitting reading the newspaper and someone will rattle biscuits and he'll pure run with his tail wagging that. <laughs> I think that's really good. That's really good. Um, Ash, Ash Gorange, thanks for your comment. Best 22mm mouth-to-lung RTA. I'll still go with the Geek Vape Amit mouth-to-lung RDA, the smaller version of it. Yep. Um, I'll throw the Berserker Mini in there, I think. Oh, that would be good. Mini, yep. Um... Oh, I've lost that. There we go. Uh, let's see. What not? Uh, let's see. FF Stoken. What? <laughs> These are getting sillier and sillier. What kind of slightly diluted milk do you drink? Skimmed, half fat, or full? If I'm going for a cup of tea, it's got to be skimmed. If I'm going for a coffee, it's got to be full. You need to taste it with the coffee, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually I'm actually on the red milk now because I'm trying to draw a bit of weight and it's like water. It's so like that's what red, it's, it's white water. That's what red milk is. <laughs> it's, it's really not nice at all. Um, hip hop juice. Hello, hip hop. Uh, good to see you, Vic. I am brew for life or vaping for life. Oh. 
Well, here's the thing is, if I gave up vaping and go back to smoking, so I'm going to say vaping for life. There we go. Yeah. There's always another juice, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if you don't, you'll understand this one, LG McCutcheon. What's this bus tour with other v, uh, UK VS? UK Vape Show's logo and the logos of myself, Dean, uh, Chris and Mark is now on the Vapor Round double-decker bus. And sometime this year, there's going to be a tour. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That is sometime pretty cool. This year. Don't know when yet, though. Well, hopefully, it's, if it's open, open bus, it's hopefully July sometime. <laughs> yeah, when the weather's good, yeah. Uh, so what are you going to do, just drive out Scotland or drive out Glasgow or London? Or... I think it's going to be like the vapor around Double Decker usually goes to store openings or established shops that want to hold an event or something, so I think we're just going to tag along. All right, okay. Okay, very good. Um, this is a good question. Uh, what type of batteries do you have? Do you... Sorry, what are the only batteries you ever use? Culture ones. <laughs> <laughs> you asked that one. Jason Carithers. That, that's, a little dig, that's a little dig at somebody else. I'll tell you the batteries that I usually use here in the house. It's usually Sony VTC 5As. Up at the studio, it's mostly Galicia, but I do have a few Molly Cell batteries up there as well that I'm trying out. Stavros is asking, have you seen the new mouth to lung from Steam Crave? Uh, I think that's the light 23mm he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've not seen it. I've seen a picture of it, but I did get it. Did you get the email from Steam Crave? I did, yeah. Yeah, uh, so hopefully we'll, we'll have them in soon enough. It's an unusual direction for Steam Crave to go down, mouth to lung. I never, knew, I never knew it was. Is it? Is it both? It's not just mouth to lung, is it? I think it's both, but I think they're, they're more leaning it towards the mouth-to-lung market. I'm always nervous when companies try and do both with the same tank. Yeah, another they, they end up fucking up both of them. Yep. Um, right, we're in the last couple of minutes, guys. Uh, Jack M asks, Oasis or Blur? I was always more of an Oasis fan, to be honest. Yeah, definitely Oasis. Yep. I think it's more our generation. Um... If Vic, can you speak any sci-fi languages? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you remember the Double Decker show on a Saturday? Rings a bell, but I don't think I watched it that much. Double Decker show. It rings a bell, that one. Yep. Uh, and we'll get the last question. Uh, it's from Peter Marker. He says, what is your all-day vape, Vic? I suppose yeah. when, when you're not reviewing, I would say. Oh, when I'm not reviewing, it's either. Now this the the Kylan two is going to be the the Kylan two is going to be slowly phased out because I'm more a fan, I'm more a fan of the Umi Bombas these days. But right now, if I'm just sitting back chilling, watching a bit of TV or watching some Netflix or watching fucking Grand Tour, it's usually this setup: the uh, Q Mini with the Kylan two filled with my peach custard because I fucking love custard vapes. Always have. <laughs> Do you never find they get a little bit too sickly if you vape it all the time? It's my own mix, though, so I've right. liked the flavour a bit. It's not like a strong in-your-face custard. It's a very light custard. That's what I went for, so I can vape it all day. Right, so there's more peach. Yeah, there's more peach than custard, yeah. Um, I do like a peach a peach vape. Um, very refreshing. Yeah, uh, there's something about it. You just kind of want to go back for more. You end up vaping it a lot. Yeah. Um, well, that's it. That's great. Thank you very much. Guys, thanks to everybody in chat. The 90 minutes is up. Uh, big massive thanks to you, Vic, for joining me on the interrogation. It was um, fun. I've enjoyed having you. Um, hopefully the guys have enjoyed it. Guys, the whole point of the show is just to kind of get a little bit of a different opinion of people's likes and dislikes, etc. Try and make it a little bit of fun. Um, so, yeah, thanks to everybody in chat. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. Vic, absolutely fantastic. Loved having you on. Looking forward to seeing you in Glasgow. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, everybody, Vic will be at Expo in May the 5th. May the... Yeah, it's the first weekend of May. Are you staying at the Premier Inn? As always, I think fucking everyone's staying there this time. I I'm there. Everyone. I'm in yeah, there. You've, you've got, I'm you, you're there. Uh, you're there. I'm there. The, the, the whole UK vape show there is because Dean Devil Vapor's going this, this year as well. And I think a couple of the American reviewers are staying at the Premier Inn this time as well. All right, excellent. 
Um, so guys, if you are heading to Expo, you nip over to the Premier Inn bar. Um, I'm sure you'll see us all there with a little whiskey and the first drink will be on me. So there you go. Sweet. Uh, guys, before you go, I do have a little uh, a little Caliburn pod from you will uh we will be doing a little giveaway so everybody that watches the video uh it's just a little caliburn brand new never been used it's the gray one and to enter this all you need to do is email me at vape don't smoke 82 at gmail.com uh vape don't smoke 82 at gmail.com and tell me the answer vic gave when i asked him what he would rather five thousand subs 20,000 views or one email from a smoker. So just basically email me, tell me the answer, uh, and I'll pick a winner in a couple of days' time. Uh, so thanks to everybody that joined the chat. Thanks to Vic. Uh, and yeah, guys, whatever you do, vape don't smoke. Bye. Bye.